about to uh, Lance and Stacy. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm, uh, I'm trying to open up the the feed on my computer so I can see what angle my phone is at and see comments. <clears throat> so, looks like I'm not showing up on here yet. There's also a delay, I know. I'm just refreshing the page multiple times until I see my own video. I'm gonna stand up for a second and see if you guys are saying anything. Because I can't see on my. Whoop, sorry. Bump. Oh, okay, I see. Alright. <laughs> I don't see my own. Uh... What the heck? I didn't make a. Pro oh, there I am. Duh. Join. Meet that. I'm about, I, I almost clicked angry face at myself. <laughs> hey, Nico. All right, cool. I think I'll be able to see your comments. So uh, there's a, obviously a lag. Let me know. I'm going to sit here for a second and see if more people join. And then let me know if the, can you see my face? Let me know if the angle is okay and if you think you'll be able to see what I'm doing and explaining. Hey, Corey, I just saw you join. Deepa. Looks good? Okay. Thank you, Tammy. Angle looks great. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to, the purpose of my demonstration, I don't think I'm some, like, you know, wheel-throwing master or anything, but I teach high school ceramics. Um, and I'm in a situation in my classroom where I only have eight working wheels um, and I, I've got, you know, 38 students. So I stagger things so that there's always a hand building project that the majority of the class is working on. And I have wheel groups. I've got uh, groups A, B, C, A, B, C, D, and E. So I've got five uh, wheel groups, about seven kids per group so that there's a different group throwing each day, which means they only throw once a week. Obviously they can't get a ton done um, in a trimester only throwing once a week, but the ones who end up really falling in love with it and are motivated to try to learn, they're allowed to come into my classroom whenever they want to. I have a lot of kids with free periods um, and I've got kids who come into my room during lunch uh, nutrition, all sorts of times, um, and they'll, if they finish a hand building project early, they're always allowed to go in, uh, sit at the wheel, and use that time to keep practicing, which is awesome. I have a lot of kids take that, uh, take advantage of that. So when I start out my demonstrations for my students, um, it just seems like they pick it up pretty well and that they understand how I'm teaching, so I wanted to share the way that I explain these things 
to kids who have literally never sat at a pottery wheel before and don't know anything about how this works. Uh, first of all, I take them over to the wedging table and I have, I, I have them watch me pull out the bag of fresh clay. I open up the bag. I show them how to kind of peel it down, you know. Um, and then I, sh I show them how to use the wire, pull this through in half, and then depending on how big these chunks are, I show them how to, you know, go ahead and cut themselves a uh, chunk of clay. I'm early. Stacy, did I get my times wrong? Am I an hour early? Because I thought I looked it up. Um, I thought one o'clock was the same. I thought it was four o'clock your time. I thought you guys were three hours ahead of me. Am I wrong? Oh God, I hope I'm not jumping on somebody else's toes. Okay, cool. All right, well, if it's cool, then we'll keep going. All right, so um, so I cut the chunks. I, I tell them that when I do this, I try to keep the chunks a certain size for their hands. I actually look at my students' hands. I say, show me your hands. And, you know, I'll have some really tall kids, boys, who've got, like, big hands. And so I'd give them sort of a larger chunk that would be the size equivalent of maybe a softball or, like, even a grapefruit. Um, and, you know, or maybe a big chunk like this. If you've got some girls or some smaller boys who have small hands, then I, sorry if I'm shaking the, shaking the camera, I make sure to cut them a smaller chunk and I explain to them that they should probably start with about a baseball size, smaller than a softball. Um, and then I show them on the wedging table how to kind of smack that, smack the corners down, right? I just have them smack it down like this to, to help start it into a rounded shape um, and then smack the rest of it like this. They usually start laughing because of the slapping noise and I just laugh with them. They go, yeah, that sounds funny. Um, uh, they, I've taught them how to wedge clay usually by this time and I just tell them they can take uh, fresh clay out of the bag and that they don't really have to wedge it. Um, but I do teach them how to wedge so that eventually they can throw with scraps from a bucket that I have in the room. Aw, Karen, Corey, that's so sweet. All right, so I, I tell them it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it somewhat round-ish, okay? Then I bring them over to the wheel, and I don't, I don't have them just start throwing. I don't just start explaining the wheel. I don't just start centering first. The first thing I do is I spend a few minutes explaining to them um, posture and things about their hair and if they have nails and things like this. So, you know, I look at the, I say, do you, do you have long hair? Do you think you need to pull it back? Um, for me, my hair is a little bit shorter than shoulder length. And so I just make sure that I tuck my hair behind my ears. It doesn't usually fall in my face, so it doesn't bother me. But I bring these issues up with them so that they can think about it. The girls with long hair, I tell them, you know, go go get a hairband or I can give you a rubber band to, to borrow. Um, I have them take off jewelry. Uh, if, they're, if they're wearing necklaces, I have them tuck the necklaces. I explain all of that stuff to them because even though it seems obvious to us who've been throwing for many years, they don't think of this stuff. They don't know. They're literally, it's like, it's like totally foreign and alien to them. Um, and then posture-wise, I sit down at the wheel and I tell them to spread their knees and scoot up super close. Uh, a lot of times, even after I explain that to them, they'll sit down at the wheel and they'll, they'll sit down and they'll be way back here, even farther back, and their knees will be like this, you know, or they'll have just this huge gap and their belly is so far away from the wheel head. I go, no, 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 don't be shy. Scoot your stool all the way up, straddle that sucker, because you want to be able to get up over the wheel and use your upper body to, to get above the clay. So I explain the posture to them. <clears throat> I have them check 
the height of their stool. Uh, we don't have very many adjustable stools, but I kind of assigned a specific stool to a specific wheel based on like which height tends to work. So, um, and then what else, what else? Jewelry, tuck your necklaces, tie your hair back. Um, okay, I think that's what I tell them at first as far as posture and like where they should sit. I explain to them that the pedal is sort of like the gas pedal on a car um, and that they don't want to stick their clay down before it's stuck on there and then just, just get it spinning and then the, you know maybe the clay goes flying. Although that happens every once in a while and then we all laugh. <laughs> um, I show them where the button is. I just explain everything, right? Then when I'm ready to get them actually started and I start explaining how to center, I tell them to make sure that the wheel head, by the way, they throw directly on the wheel heads. We don't use bats. Um, we don't have any bat pins. So I just have them throw directly on the wheel head. Uh, and I tell them to make sure that the wheel head is dry. If a student used the wheel before them and uh, didn't clean it up properly, which I'm, I'm usually on their case about that, they usually do a pretty good job, uh, but I tell them to go ahead and wipe it off with a sponge. And, and then if it's super wet, if it seems like the wheel head's super wet, I tell them to go ahead and grab a paper towel and dry it off. I explain that the clay should not be wet when you first stick it on. So then I, I take it and I tell them to just kind of somewhat throw it in the middle, tap it down a couple times. Um, and if they feel like it helps, sometimes I do this naturally. I take my hands and I just kind of wiggle it on there. It makes me feel better about it being a little bit stuck on. And then I say, all right, you've got your bucket of water here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but let me get it closer. The other thing I uh, forgot to mention is that I have them grab the bucket off the wheel, go over to the sink and fill it up. I specifically tell them to use warm water so that it, if they're not filling it with cold water and then it makes your hands kind of cramp up, I, I tell them to get warm water and then I tell them to make sure that the water is, you know, pretty full, like maybe an inch from the top. You'd be surprised all the specifics you got to give them but a lot of times when i haven't told them to do that they only fill it up halfway and then what happens is they're like reaching across and trying to get their hands you know reaching across the wheel and down into the bucket it's just more difficult to reach the water so i tell them to make sure that the water's pretty full so there's that okay we've got our clay kind of stuck on there and explain to them this is not good enough don't start flying off the handle the clay is going to go flying you still need to do Number one step, which is form a skirt. So get your hands too super wet, dip both hands completely into the bucket, and then put your hands on the clay. I tell them to overlap, left hand over right, just slightly, slightly overlapping. And, oh, hi, Heidi. Okay, so left hand over right, directly on top of the clay, and I explain to them that they really need to be pushing straight down. Don't try to push forward because the clay will fly off the wheel. The first, this first initial step of forming the skirt is all about gluing the clay to the wheel head so that it doesn't fly anywhere, okay? So left over right, we push, and I, oh, lots of speed. I tell them that every step of the way, you're gonna start out fast and then each step you get progressively slower. So first thing, nice and fast. I tell them to floor it, floor it, okay? Don't be afraid, floor it. Left over right, push straight down, and they have to really tighten all the muscles in their arms, tighten the triceps, have good posture, sitting up straight, um, flat lower back, leaning forward, and if they can rest their arms on their knees, their elbows need to be in against their torso, okay, for strength and support. So again, wet hands, leaning forward over the clay, in at the chest, left over right, pushing down just to form that skirt. And I say, gradually shift your hands downward and then hold it so that you feel 
these muscles right here getting stuck down to the wheel head. And then it, it glues itself to the wheel head like that. So I tell them, you know, hold it, hold your hands on the wheel head so that you really feel itself glue, it, glue itself down. Does that make sense? And then I stop the wheel and I show them that it's like, whoop, like a skirt glued to the wheel head. I explain to them that every step of the way I'm going to constantly be wiping my hands. Right? I also mention to them, show, show them how I'll, I'll take my, my palm and grab this stuff and pull it, the slip, pull it up, put it back up onto the clay. And it's a really good way to just keep re-moisturizing the clay. Wipe, wipe, fresh water. Okay, so that's just step one, forming the skirt. Then step two is now you can actually try to center. So now I'm going to explain to them how to cone up and cone down. Um, coning up, I say, left hand still over right, left over right, thumbs up out of the way. Keep your thumbs up out of the way so that the clay has a place to go. So I'm going to reach around the other side of the clay. Again, keep my elbows in at my torso for um, strength and support. And I'm going to keep my hands down, touching the wheel head, left over right. And all I'm going to do is squeeze my hands inward, keeping my hands down, squeezing inward. So left over right, thumbs up out of the way, squeeze in at the bottom, and the clay comes up. Okay? Now, I'm used to centering in this way, and so I explain to them that once I do that, once the clay comes up, I now just shift my left hand up and then I cone down, which is step three. Um, but I, I tell them that they can scrape their hands off if they feel super muddy um, and, and then do this in a separate step. So cone up, then cone down. Cone down, I go from that same position, left hand over right, thumbs up out of the way. Now I shift my left hand upward and prep, push that clay down while holding it in the center with my right hand. And then I release, I relax my muscles and pull away slowly. Explain to them how important it is that you don't pull away, like yank away quickly. Almost all of them do it. It's, it's kind of funny when they do it because they'll get it somewhat centered and then they pull away so fast it throws it off center. So I try to explain that to them that that's what'll happen. Oh good, sure Heidi. Thank you, Stacy. Okay, so then I do that, that process. Uh, I usually have this skirt that's kind of squeezing out underneath my hands a little bit, which, I don't know, it just depends on if I'm in the groove that day or not, because I honestly don't throw that often, um, mainly just for demonstration for the kids, and then, you know, from there, I, I teach a lot of classes that are visual art, drawing, and painting, so I don't have a lot of ceramic classes. But anyway, uh, so I'll just kind of pull some of that extra clay off with my finger every once in a while. Then I demonstrate the process again of coning up and coning down all over again. So left over, left over right, thumbs up out of the way, elbows in at your torso, squeeze in, and then left hand shifts up on top, push down, and hold it in the middle and then pull away slowly. Relax the hands and pull away slowly, and we're mostly centered. I then, I'll also show them um, what happens if it's a situation where they don't pull away slowly. I go, watch, watch this. Cone up, cone down, and then pull away fast, and it's like blah, 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 blah. Oh, I, sh I also show them, like, if, you're, if your arms are not anchored in at your sides, Here's what'll happen. If, if my elbows are out here loosey goosey and I'm like elbows down at my knees and I'm trying to I'm trying to squeeze in, I mean that happens to everybody when you're a beginner, right? Like why the heck did that go so crazy wonky? Well my elbows were out here. I was trying to cone it down and it just it goes crazy. So if you're a beginner yourself or if you're trying to teach this to beginners, if you're having trouble with this sort of 
shape going on when you're trying to center, I guarantee it's because your elbows are out too far and maybe you're not, um, you know, kind of <clears throat> tightening your muscles. I explained to them, you don't have to be a crazy strong person. There's lots of, um, I say there's lots of little old ladies who don't have super strong upper body strength that are master potters and they can throw like nobody's business. So you don't have to be, you know, a football linebacker or something. So cone up and then shift up, cone down and then pull away slowly. Now we're centered. So I do that whole process with them multiple times, just like I did for you just now, where I'm like, cone up, cone down. Here's what'll happen if your elbows are loose. Here's what'll happen if you're um, pulling away too fast and you knock it off center. Uh, because coning up and coning down and all of those variables that are involved, that is quite complicated in and of itself. So I tell them all of that. I cone up and cone down four or five times for them while they're watching me. And then I have them go sit down at the wheels with their ball of clay and just practice that. I don't even bother showing them how to open or pull a wall up on that first day. Um, because again, I only have them once a week anyway, and my classes are, you know, an hour long. So I just want them centering. And I tell them, just go sit down, sit down and try it, try to cone up, try to cone down. And um, I will come around and help you as you're doing it, you know. Um, and so first day's lesson, that's it. They're, they're just centering. And then second week, I'll kind of see how people are going, how, how, how things are going. And I'll see if it seems like maybe they're ready to learn how to open. Um, and, and then I start teaching that next step. So for how I teach how to open, let me make sure this is centered before I move on to that. Take this off a little bit. Yeah, feels pretty good. Wipe, wipe. Heidi only does cookies. I don't know what you're talking about. We'll be expecting a pickle making party video <laughs> from Heidi. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. I've heard the C family makes lots of pickles. Okay. Um, bring this off. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting over a cold. I've had a nasty cold for a couple weeks. All right, so when I teach them how to open, I remind them the coning up and coning down process. Um, and then the next step I tell them is you're going to bring your elbows in at your, in close to your sides again. You're going to rest your left hand with your fingers loose on the left hand side, just kind of relaxed with your thumb up out of the way. This is just for support. And your right hand you're going to make, you're going to fold these two fingers in and make a gun shape. Okay. So we call this step opening with pew pew. And by the way, I need to tell everybody all of these steps and the way that I throw are 100% from Tim C. I did not throw this way. I didn't use all this terminology when I was in college. I went to multiple workshops with Tim and he taught me from scratch. So I attribute all of my ability to teach my students how to throw well from him. Everything I'm saying is what I learned from Tim. And I tell my students that on a daily basis. I'm like, yeah, you know, I got all these steps and all these silly terms from Tim because it, it works. Um, so I've got a little paper sign that is uh, taped to the wall above each wheel. And it says, step one, form the skirt. Step two, cone up. Step three, cone down. Step four, open with pew pew. <laughs> so that's step four, open with pew pew. All right, so left hand here, right hand here, okay? Make a gun shape, pew pew. And then you're gonna bring your wrists in close together. And I explained to them that your middle finger is longer than the rest and that it's really important to make sure that when you open, make sure that you're actually opening in the center and not too far forward. Sometimes they will start digging in and then their middle finger goes too far forward. Then you're gonna open it off center and that just makes things so much more difficult. Same problem if you're opening too close to you, okay? Then you get this weird nipple like that. 
and I tell them it looks like a boob with a nipple. They they usually crack up. Some of them laugh. Some of them get embarrassed. <laughs> and then I just take take a take my hand and just kind of smooth that out. I'm like, doesn't it? It, it does. It looks like a boob, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Okay. Wipe off. <laughs> oh, cool. That's awesome, Stacy. All right, so I make sure that they have... Oh, I forgot to tell them. I forgot to tell you that I tell them that their left thumb actually should rest in between these two fingers, so it's like a little tripod. Hey, Becca, there's the tripod thing, the triangle tripod thing. Get on that game. <laughs> Those of you that watched Becca's presentation the other day, I love that she said that. Get on that game. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that from her and start using that in my classes. I love that so much. All right, so left thumb in between these two fingers. Middle finger is longest, so make sure that initially you're opening with that middle finger. And I tell them that the wheel speed should should be maybe a little slower than maybe more like medium speed than, um, than when you were centering. Centering needs to be fast. This step can be slower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get on that kid. All right. So middle finger, I tell them to angle down at an angle. <laughs> I, I say don't dig straight down. And then I show them with my hands. I say, when, as you start to open, you want to open at a, a triangular angle. So you want, you want to open like this, and I show them with my hands, and I go, you wanna open so that you're digging down at an angle like this, okay? And then once I teach them how to open um, the bottom of the opening wider, they're gonna open it, and it'll become more of a 90 degree angle cylinder like that. So middle finger, Water, touch, touch, water, touch, touch. Don't douse it with water. Too much water is not necessary. All right, so angling down gradually. Let me get this thumb up out of the way. There we go. I tell them to try as hard as they can to relax and not jump or move forward. Like deep breath, relax. This is when you don't need to be stiff. angle. I also mentioned to them because, okay, do you see how in this process that these tendons right here in your hand are like popping out? <clears throat> I've noticed that with my, for myself, depending on how stiff the clay is, hopefully you have soft clay. Um, but depending on the person, this step can make those ligaments in your hand sore. It, it's kind of uncomfortable. So I tell them that as they start to open, if this if this position is uncomfortable and it's like hurting right here, then they can turn their hand this way if that's more comfortable. Um, I just tell them to you know give it a try and see. So I'm going in at an angle and I tell them like look at that you know I'm going in at a sort of a triangular um, shape. I'm not digging directly down. And then I'd say, okay, go down here. You're gonna go until you think you're about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And how the heck do you know when that is? You're a beginner and you have no idea. Just don't drill all the way down to the wheel head. So this is when I explain the needle tool. Needle tool, take this, poke it all the way down, let go, and they're always freaked out by the fact that I just poked a hole in my clay <laughs> and I don't have to worry about it. It'll get closed up. Take your index finger, reach over the top, make sure that your index finger reaches all the way down, grab the needle tool, pull it out. And there you go. That is how thick your clay is at the bottom. And they go, they, they usually go, Ooh, cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I'm as far down as I want to go. And now I'm going to explain to them that what we have here in the opening is this shape. I'm going to now, Put my fingers down in the bottom there, and I'm going to pull to left to into my left hand palm. I'm going to drag across the bottom into my outside palm, so that what happens is this shape becomes this shape. Okay. 
touch, touch, just a little bit of water, just touch, okay? Fingers inside here. I was opening like this, now I shift my hand this way and I'm gonna pull into my left hand. And I'm opening just across the bottom there. I also explained to them that they should only open as wide as those little circular yellow sponges. I don't think I have one, I think they're all in the classroom. You know what I'm talking about though, right? You know, the, the typical little yellow sponges that everybody has. I, I tell them to, like, I go, here, pick up your yellow sponge. That's, that's the size you should open it to, okay? And then you can smooth out that bottom if there's like a little, little lip or a little nipple there. I'll come across, smooth that out, smooth that out. Okay, it looks pretty good. Scrapey, scrapey, scrapey. Wipe off your palms, okay? Then I usually, at that point, they seem like they, they, they grasp it. Um, and I say, okay, now I'd like you to go back over to your wheel, sit down and practice that step. Try to get that step done. Um, excuse me, and I'll come around and I'll help them, remind them. By the way, a lot of times I'll ask them, do you mind if I put my hands on top of yours? You know, if they're really struggling centering or really struggling with whatever step they're on, I ask them if I can put my hands on top of theirs and kind of control their hands. I just tell them to relax their hands. And then I say, watch, and I go, boom, and I put my hands on top of theirs and I go, Bleh. and I go, here's how it should feel. And then I do the step with their hands under mine and they usually go, oh, it's like an epiphany for them. So, but I always ask them first. I'm not just gonna grab their hands without asking. Um, so I have them go over to their wheel and practice opening and then I come over and check on them. And then I'll come back to the wheel and I'll say, okay, now we're gonna do the fun part, super fun part. C is for cookie with your left hand. Make a C, okay? And then you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna take these three fingers Close them in, fold your thumb over, so you're like pointing, but then you take that finger and you cramp it. So this is your crampy finger, okay? C is for cookie and crampy finger. And that's what it says on the little poster that I have next to each uh, wheel. Again, these are Tim C terms. So after you've opened with pew pew and then widened that opening, the next step on the little poster says, uh, C is for cookie plus crampy finger. Once I demonstrate for this this for them, they remember that, and then when they see it on the poster, they totally know what I'm talking about. All right, and then I explain to them that from here on out, everything that they're gonna do, everything that they're gonna do is gonna be at the four o'clock position on the clock face. Um, and I don't think I have a ton of slip on here to show this, but usually I go, you know, I do what Tim does when Tim teaches his beginning students. Go like that, go like that. This entire area here is a, is a no-no. You try to try to draw a little smiley face, not a smiley face, a frowny face. This is the bad zone. This is the happy face zone. Can you see that? Boop, boop. <laughs> smiley face zone, frowny face zone. Don't touch the clay over here. Only touch it here, okay? So right in this area. Tim C terms, yeah. <laughs> All right, so cramp, uh, C's for cookie, come over here, take that hand, cramp it, and then I show them how I rest this part of the C, the my thumb here, I rest this in between sort of the gap in my right hand for support. Your hands should always be linked together. So I come over here, Put the C inside and then rest this part of my thumb over here, cramp that knuckle, and I show them that it should be this part of your knuckle digging in. Again, my arms should be in at my sides. And I tell them, okay, slow your wheel down. Now this is gonna be the slowest that you go. Dig in, just slight pressure, and your, your hands are linked together with just the clay in between. So that it's all like one unified unit. <laughs> one unit, okay? So touch, touch. I tell them to make sure they stop if their skin starts dragging on the clay. Okay, C is for cookie, rest here, get your knuckle in there, and then just squeeze 
and slowly work your way up the wall. As they reach the top, as they get closer to the top, they should release pressure. And I tell them, okay, now relax your hands, relax all your muscles and pull away slowly. Then I show them how the top is usually a little bit wonky and so they can do this pinchy shape and then take this finger and, and smooth this out and compress the lip. So there's all this clay down in here and I show that to them. Like, look at all this clay. This is, there's tons of clay here. You can get back down in here and sometimes I'll scrape a little bit of this off just so my knuckle can get closer. Um, but <clears throat> I explained to them, now you go back down to the bottom and you try it all over again. You can keep pulling that wall up until you can get it as, as tall as you can. Oh, no problem, Latoya, sounds good. Ha <laughs> ha, Stacy. <laughs> Alright, so touch, 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 there we go. Again, scrape the hands off, water, water, a little bit. I never douse it with water. Get a little bit of water on the inside, just touch, okay? And then C is for cookie, crampy finger. Reach in, slow the wheel down. Can you guys see that my knuckle getting in at the bottom there? I show them, I'll pull away and I'll say, look, I just created a little ridge there, which makes it easy for my knuckle to grab onto something. So you can kind of feel what you're doing a little bit easier. Um, and then I also explain that however slow their wheel is going, ooh, I got a hair. Yeah. However slow their wheel is going, they need to make sure that their hands are moving up the wall even slower than that. I tell them to try to make sure that the wheel makes two complete revolutions around before they move up another level on the, on the wall. So C is for cookie, crampy finger, get that knuckle in there. And then as they move up the wall, they can shift this knuckle up so that instead of just digging in and using this part of their knuckle, they're now using the entire side of the finger. And then as they reach up to the top, as they get closer to the top, of the cylinder, relax, because we tend to um, we tend to tighten up even more and use more pressure at the top, which is not good. Uh, so as you get closer to the top, make sure you tell them to relax and pull away very slowly. And then you get this gunk off your hands, wipe it off. Hi Denise. Oh, that's why you guys are talking about cookies, because I keep saying C is for cookie. That's right. Compress the lip. Usually grab some of this off here. Smooth this out. So this usually, this lesson of opening and then pulling the wall up with C is for cookie and crampy finger, that's usually on like weeks two and three, they kind of repeat that. It's, it's only their second or third lesson. And again, I'm only teaching these kids on the wheel once a week. Um, so a, a lot of it has to be repeated to really solidify in their minds. Um, so the next step that I tell them is that now, let's say you've gotten it as thin as you wanna get it. I don't let them keep anything I, in the beginning when they're doing this, I just want them to practice, practice, practice and pull the wall until it fails so that they are free to make the mistakes and not worry if they goof it up. But they naturally, man, they, if, if, if they get a wall, they are so excited, they get any height and they always wanna keep it. And I say, no, no, not the first time, not probably not even the second time. But then I do end up letting them keep stuff. Um, they get so excited. I explain to them why and they're usually, they usually understand. Okay, uh, so let me pull this up just a little bit taller. Get that a 
little bit thinner. There we go. And I show them that sometimes they'll get to the point where, especially as beginners, they won't have a very straight cylinder. They, they'll tend to be leaning to one side um, and maybe this widens out more than they want it. And so I show them how they can collar it in. Take hands. Oh no, I'm, I'm not using groggy clay at all. This is actually uh, Laguna B Mix wood. It's buttery smooth, I love it. I stopped using clay with grog like 10 years ago. Uh, the first high school that I taught at in Phoenix had a super groggy clay and every time that I would throw with it, it just chewed off my skin. It was awful. Um, so, no grog, nope, no grog. <laughs> Nope, nope. Uh, Julianne, what your adult students don't understand what? All right, so to call her in, I go, look, here, let me, let me make this really wide. And I show them, you know, if you get this curve out that you weren't intending and you want to collar it back in, take your hands and just really gently, just very gently wrap your hands around the whole thing. As long as you're gentle, you can totally do that. By the way, I've also been able to successfully help the kids when they're trying to open and pull a wall up and then sometimes they'll do goofy things as beginners where they'll, where they'll like trap an air bubble inside, like an enclose a mound that's actually hollow on the inside or something. I've been able to figure out how to work around that stuff. Um, I, I've been able to kind of like take my hands and force the clay back down and look I'm, sh I'm shoving it back down hmm. so that they don't have to feel like they got to start all over again you know and then I'll choke it in collar it in I say choke sometimes <laughs> but it's collaring so sometimes I'll just go back down I'll kind of shove the clay back down for them so that I can show them the steps all over again um, move this out um, and then I've got a sponge on a stick which I also learned from Tim get some of this goop out of the middle here my wheels go pretty fast I'm able to throw quickly and pull walls up quickly um, but I try to demonstrate slow for them so that they can see what I'm doing and they're not going to be able to pull up so quickly. I see you compressing the ram. Did I miss that as part of your teaching sequence? Yeah, I usually, I mean, I don't think I do a ton of explanation about compressing the rim to them. Um, the main reason why I do it is just to smooth it out. I'm not like I'm not really explaining the idea of compression to them because I think it's a lot of us have talked a lot in in clay buddies about how compression is sort of a myth. Um, I don't I don't explain compression to them in in some of the traditional ways. I just explain to them that I like to smooth the lip out so that it's got a nice rounded form. Does that make sense? So. I did talk about how I'll make like a pinchy shape and then take my right index finger, I pinch with my left and then do an index finger on top um, to smooth out that lip. I do use the word compress sometimes, but I don't like go into a whole explanation about compression with them because I think it's kind of a, a myth. All right, let me just pull this up and smooth this out a little bit more. A lot of times, honestly, like I don't even get to the point where I, I don't teach the entire class shaping. A lot of times I, my required project for them in one trimester that I have them is to throw a six inch tall cylinder. That's it. So with most of them, I don't even get to the shaping with them because I have them once a week. Um, and it's once a week for like, 12 weeks or something. Our trimesters are short because we, we have three trimesters in a school year. Yeah, Denise, that's exactly how I feel about it. It's, I'm just, I'm only compressing it just to make it smooth and make it look nicer because it's usually like gunky and bumpy at the top. So I smooth it out for that. But it's not because of like, oh, if you don't compress it, there's going to be cracks or whatever. Like, that, I don't find that to be true. 
All right. Uh, okay, so I do with some of my kids who pick this up and they seem like they're really into it and they, they're naturals, I do now teach them how to shape. I'll do it kind of on an individual basis. Um, but when you get to the point where you're teaching how to shape, this is when I tell them you gotta make sure that you cut the skirt off before you shape anything. So let's scrape. And I'll take this. I explain how to hold the wood knife. Um, I have them hold it in their right hand, left hand underneath for support, and bring it in from the outside at the four o'clock position and cut right up against right up against the bottom and cut all that off at, at the bottom so that they've got a nice smooth wall 90 degrees straight down to the wheel head. And then for shaping, I, ex I just show them really quickly and I just kind of have them play. I don't go into a lot of depth with it. I'll take my inside hand and I'll explain that for shaping, you want the wheel to go really slowly. Left hand on the inside, if you're gonna push a shape outward, if you're gonna try to belly the shape out, your right hand needs to be outside and your left hand needs to be inside. As you push from the inside with your left hand, your right, your right hand is on the outside for support. So I just show them how I'll take my fingers on the inside and I still use a knuckle, I still cramp this finger and I'll show them, hang on, I can feel, I need more water, there we go. One hand on the inside and I'll stick my knuckle down at the bottom and my left fingers are slightly above. So the clay is in between, my left hand is slightly above and I just push out from the inside and then I show them and they go, ooh, cool, you know, like there's a little bump there. And I tell them you can keep on going that, you can work your way up slowly and that'll kind of thin that out. Uh, let's say you accidentally go like wider than you want or, or even if it's purposeful, you can belly that out a lot. As long as your hands are linked together and then come up the wall and pull away slowly. And then I show them how you can take your fingers and you can collar the top part in if you want there to be an inward pull away slowly. So you make that shape with your fingers and you just come in and squeeze very gently. Again, it only works if your skin's not dragging on the surface. Right like that, really gently, and then pull away slowly. And then I still have a lot of clay left up here, so I can actually take just little fingers, just a couple fingers, couple fingers, and I can, I can smooth this out, kind of pinch this out a little bit more press the lip just for pretties. Yeah, Lisa, that, I think that's true. Compressing it keeps it from getting too thin or weak. Yeah, that's, a, that's definitely why I do it. It's like when you're pulling the wall up to the top, we tend to use more pressure at the top and then, and then the lip does tend to get thinner, so I'll, I'll kind of push it down to thicken it again. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but they usually get really excited when I show them how to make how to make a, a shape out of this. And then I show them how they can really belly it out even more. Get that knuckle in there. And I, I go, look, look, if I pull this, if I lean these fingers outward and get this nice outward form, outward curve, and I decide, oh, it's too wide, I don't like it, I can just collar that back in. You know, I tell them to play. Use the tip of your finger, play with different shapes. Bend this out, play with it, you don't like it, collar it back in. Maybe you don't like how fat that is, how fat that belly is, just call, take your whole hand and whoop, look at that. And pull away and I'm back to a cylinder. <laughs> so kind of cool to be able to um, show them that you can just play with it. And I literally tell them, I want you to play. I don't want you to imagine that you're keeping it. 
because then you're going to be trying to be too careful and you're not going to be willing to experiment. I want you to experiment. So play, play, play until you completely crush it. Um, I show them that like, if, especially for the guys who have big hands, if their cylinder gets too narrow and they can't even fit their hand in there, I tell them not to worry. Go ahead and gently stick your hand in there, which will widen it maybe more than they want it to be. But then that's another reason why collaring is awesome because you can get in there, pull this up, maybe belly this back out again, gently. And then collar it back in. I honestly rarely get to the point where I'm actually using my stainless steel rib with and clean up like because I just don't have very much time to, to teach my kids. I only have them for a lot of them for one trimester but every once in a while I've got a few kids who love it so much will come in at lunch, come in at nutrition and they ask for more instruction and so then I teach them this. You find my stainless steel rib. So here's your flexible metal rib of death. And that is what it says on the poster. What's that acronym? Flexible Metal Rib of Death. F-M-R-D. That's what it says on the, on the poster. Step six or whatever step I'm on. F-M-R-D. And they always go, they point at it and they go, what's F-M-R-D? I go, Flexible Metal Rib of Death. <laughs> and I explain to them how it's flexible, but man, you got to be careful with this thing because it will cut you. It will cut you. Um, so, hand up, left hand on the inside. Just push your hand in and go. That's right, Joe. <laughs> Left hand in on the inside. This flexible metal rib on the outside. Uh, I think I use the curved side. Flexi, flexi. Just make sure you have a really good grip on it. And then I show them how they can, whoop, how they can bring this up the side, how they can bend it to the shape of the pot and it just does it does amazing cleanup. It scrapes off all that slip on the outside. Makes it really smooth. I think I um, I altered the shape a little bit. So I can color that in again if I want. Um, but some really nice cleanup. Being able to bend this. And you can work your way downward too. I, I really don't think there's a problem with going down the pot. I, I kind of go up and down. Okay, uh, Dory, I can, um, I think I have a photo of it, but if I don't, I'll probably be, I'll probably be back in my classroom, I don't know when, next week maybe, I'm, I'm in California, and we're, we're pretty much locked down, they don't, they haven't called it like an official lockdown, but it's, what is it called, it's called like stay home, stay safe initiative or something, so our schools are out, like they are everywhere, but we're not even supposed to go into our classrooms even though there's no students, which uh, that's, that's become a really sort of depressing issue for me because I love my classroom and it's basically my art studio and um, I've, I've been crying on and off for days. <laughs> as soon as they told me I'm not allowed to be in my classroom anymore, basically I have to, oh no, I'm gonna start crying. Basically, I have to contact the administration ahead of time and ask for permission, let them know ahead of time if I'm planning on going in, because as soon as I go in and do whatever I'm doing and then leave, they have to send a cleaning crew in to clean up after me, which I don't fully get that. It's like precautionary measures in case I am infected, but my outlook is I don't understand why they're looking at it that way if there's no classes and I am the only one going into my classroom just leave it let me go in and out of my classroom and then whenever school resumes again then go in and send a cleaning crew in there nobody should be going in there other than me so I don't know that's just that's just my own opinion anyway uh, I'll take a, yeah, shelter in place. Yeah, that sounds like what we're on. I would love to be closer to you, Joe. Anyway, that's a nice cleanup with this metal, uh, flexible metal rib of death. Um, sometimes I'll use the flat side to do.
do like a final cleanup. Oh, I like I like using this little point, this little corner here, sometimes to make a ridge. Um, I usually do like a better job cleaning up, but you know, I'm talking and stuff. And uh, okay, so then I show them how to clean up the looks like I got like two minutes left or something. I show them how to clean up the wheel head. Clean up the wheel head. Cut the skirt at the bottom. Do a little bit of cleanup at the bottom. Again, hold this angle, left hand underneath for support. Trim. Trim this extra off the bottom here. However much you want to trim it. Um, and then make sure that the wheel head is clean. Do any final like clean up here, compression, whatever. And then get the sponge on a stick, get the water out of the center here. And then uh, wipe your hands off. Get your hands clean. Wipey, wipey, wipey. Clean, clean, clean. And dry. Dry, dry, dry. And where's my wire? Wire. Take the wire. Sometimes I'll wrap it around my fingers. Be, be careful if you tell them to do that, because that can cut you too. But I just hold down the wire, make sure they, they understand to hold the wire down, pull it through. And with clean, dry hands, you can pick it up. Da -da -da. It's not warping or anything. Just pick it up, set it down. And that is it. Let me pull this off and I'll show you. Sorry. See, there it is, sitting right there. Isn't that cool? And then I usually have them sit it, set it. <laughs> I didn't clean it up very well. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Oops. I'm getting the. Don't rotate your phone. So, um, that's pretty much it. Let me flip this camera around um, I will try to get a photo of that poster that I was talking about it just says number one form skirt number two cone up number three cone down um, open with pew pew uh, I think the next step says C is for cookie and plus crampy finger um and then cut skirt and then fmrd <laughs> i think those are the steps that i have written on the on the little poster absolutely thank you stacy thanks for encouraging me to do this i didn't know if it would be very useful to people because people in clay buddies uh you know have so many years of experience for the most part and are possibly way better than i am but uh I think that what I have to offer is the teacher perspective for high school students and for people who are beginners. I think that's one of my strengths is that I tend to be good at explaining things um, because I have an analytical brain. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm just good at explaining stuff, I think. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining. And I hope this was helpful to some of you who are teachers or for anybody who else is a, who's a beginner. Yeah, no problem, Lee. Thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys, stay safe, stay inside, give your kids hugs and kisses. Um, and if any of you are, are interested, I will send you a link to a Google form that I created for my students, which is called a social and emotional check-in. And there's five questions on it, and it's totally anonymous. I sent this out to all my students, and I, I was astonished at uh, the responses that I got. Um, so if any of you want um, to see that, I will share it with you. Um, maybe just message me on my page or something. All right. Thanks, guys. I got to go because the next person's about to go on, I think. All right. Bye.